Today, we're going to cover one of the 20th century's most horrific genocides, the Holodomor. In the 1930s, the Soviets were so hell-bent on their communist principles, including collective farming, and what seemed like erasing Ukrainian peasants, that they confiscated all their crops, food, and animals. Slowly, Ukrainians began to starve. Starvation became so widespread and people became so desperate that some even resorted to cannibalism to survive. And in true communist fashion, the truth of the starvation remained hidden to the world. Indeed, the world was blind to what was happening. Thankfully, the truth did eventually come out, thanks to a few dedicated and brave journalists. So what exactly precipitated the Holodomor? How many died in this genocide? And how can we better commemorate it? Well, joining me now is Mark Schweck, member of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress and organizer of the Holodomor commemoration in Toronto. Mark, thank you so much for joining me today. And um, for our viewers who may not be so familiar, I, I gave us a brief introduction, but please tell us what, what was the Holodomor? What is Holodomor? So, uh, Tanya, the Holodomor against the Ukrainian people, a Holod meaning famine and war meaning death. And that's the combination of the words that, uh, that create the word Holodomor. The Holodomor was uh, perpetuated by the communist regime led by Stalin, who occupied Ukraine. War, and they wanted to collectivize Ukraine and, and, of course, industrialize Ukraine to suit the needs of the five-year plans of Russia. So they created standards that were impossible to achieve. Uh, they then came to homes and started to anyone caught with any food was arrested or beaten or killed. Um, and then they later came to homes and started searching through floorboards, through walls, attics, and found anything they could, tore down walls, tore down uh, hidden compartments that people. And so it really was a genocide against the Ukrainian people in that millions were starved. They tried to get to the cities. They could not get to the cities because they were blocked. They could not ask for help. They were blocked and so on. And so many, many millions of this. And uh, that was my next question. How how many millions died? I mean, were there accurate records kept? How, how do we know how many died? So the records are very poor, to be honest. The, the Soviets, unlike the Germans who perpetuated, kept extremely good records. Uh, even in their evil acts, they actually kept good records. The Soviets were disorganized and did not keep good records. So it's very difficult, apart from getting local um, uh, information on local uh, killing, People who died or deaths in certain areas were very accurate, in other areas non-existent. As a matter of fact, many of the people later left Ukraine, so their whole departments packed up their materials and left. So the, the data trail, if you will, is not very solid. The only way we can have died is using statistical inference, uh, looking at the population trend of Ukraine during that period, looking at the population after that period and comparing it to the other countries of the Soviet Union at that time. And there are, there are estimates that range from difficult to pinpoint. So we choose to say that millions perish and not get caught up in the mathematics of it. One life mm -hmm. is too much. And this you're, is millions. You're right. You're right. Uh, uh, one life is too much. That's absolutely correct. Um, so what precipitated this atrocity? Because a lot of our viewers may... I mean, I'm, I'm part Slavic, so I understand a little bit more of the geopolitics of that area and around this time. But explain to our viewers so that they really understand what, what precipitated this um, genocide against these Ukrainian peasants. Right. So it's a complex question. Um, Russia has occupied Ukraine since the 17th century. So call it 300 plus years of occupation of Ukraine off and on, um, mostly on. And they occupied Ukraine as their backyard uh, granary, if you will, to feed them, to uh, steal their, their, their foodstuffs, to steal their, their coal and other natural resources, and eventually colonized much of Ukraine. Um, and Russia always felt that this was theirs. Uh, when Ukraine lost the war in World War I and uh, Russia had a revolution, the communists came into power, the communists felt they could even do more evil. And after uh, Stalin took over, the, the evil hit another level completely. So Stalin, um, you know, completely demonic in his approach to life and death. He would crush anyone, kill anyone to achieve his goals. And his goals were to uh, increase the 
demands of the population. Okay, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to pause you there. We have to cut to commercial break, and we'll pick this up in just a few moments.